Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Onassimus. Philemon. Number nine, what verse? Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the age, and now also prisoner of Jesus Christ. So now we come love. In the Bible, it says that long verse that is so squeeze to death God is love and people probably couldn't find it in the Bible first John and what does it mean God is love that means if you don't know God you don't know what love is on your radio on your television on your movie screens in the back seat of your car holding hands in high school if you are not a child of God, you are not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have no idea what love is. Jesus Christ said, those who are not of God, you are of your father, the devil. Satan has no love. Satan has no care. Satan has no mercy and grace, and yet the attitude of God is love, mercy, grace. So the first thing we see, Paul, yet for love's sake, talking to a saved man, from a saved man, for God so loved the world, Philemon, you were saved by the love of God through Jesus Christ. We got old Nassimuth here. He's a child of God too. He's saved. That love that God shed upon you, Philemon, you're to, sh uh, you're to show that same love to a brother in the Lord. Let's look at the scriptures. These quotes are from 1 John. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is no occasion of stumbling in him. For we know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. But whosoever has the world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his walls of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? There's a brother that has a need, and you got that need, you can meet the need, and you won't do that need. For the brother. Where is the love of God in that? You're selfish. If a man say I love God. And hates his brother. He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother. Whom he has seen. How can he love God. Who he has not seen. Great question John. And this commandment have we from him. That. He who loveth God, loveth his brother also. Now Paul said earlier in verse 7, uh, 8, excuse me. I can use force. I can demand you. That's wrong. That's childish. That's old nature. That's Satan. But for the love of God, for the love of Jesus Christ that shed abroad upon us, Philemon and me, Paul, I'm going to ask you in the same love of Christ that saved your soul. For this runaway slave of yours who has done you wrong. I am asking you not to show wrath but 
the love of God. John the Baptist said, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Philemon, a type of God the Father, Paul is saying, Do not show this man wrath. Show him the love of God. Now we don't know the extent that what Onassimus has done to Philemon, we don't know if Philemon, here comes Onassimus coming up the, the walkway, the driveway, whatever it is. The prodigal son's father goes up, wraps his arm, I am so happy to see you, son. We don't know that's what's going to happen with Philemon. We may understand the fact is, as, as Onassimus comes up to Philemon, Philemon, like, Who's that guy? Get me his papers. I'm going to sell him. Get me the whips. I'm going to beat him. How dare you do that to me? As Onassimus is carrying that paper to him. But maybe Philemon is saying, Hey, wait a minute. There's that slave. He done me wrong. He's not coming in my bedroom window at 3 o'clock in the morning. He's coming up during the day. He's walking up. He has something to say to me. He may have bad, he may have good, I don't know. But we do know that Onassis will be carrying this letter that we're reading and studying to Philemon and say, hey, he's a child of God today. Philemon could have three reactions. Wrath! A man that's not saved. What's he want? <laughs> Why is he come? Or that's a brother in Christ, and let me guide and help him. So scripture would tell Philemon and all Christians today, Onassis was not only a runaway slave. I was a runaway slave. I was shackled to sin. I ran from God. Listen, when I was given an age, and Catholic Church is not God, but when I was given an age, you want to go to church? No, I don't. Bye. See you. I'm on my own. And when my grandmother, through my aunt and uncle, found the church and is right preaching then, so he found this church and preaches the Bible. Said, Get away from me. I don't want it. All right? I'm enjoying my sin. Leave me alone. But so you got to come. No! Leave me alone. All right? Can't do it. Thank God the Holy Spirit kept working on my heart. I didn't see it in my conscience. I went and heard the gospel and got saved. Now I don't have the wrath of God upon me. I got the love of God on me. So when I go run to the Father, as Onassis and his father, I, I have sinned against you. I have done wrong. First John 1, 9. He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. And that's what, um, uh, that's what Philemon can do now, 1 John 1, 9. He can absolutely, once he learns about, once Onassis admits his sin, Philemon can get it right to the love. You see, right now, when, when Onassis shows up to Philemon, the wrath of God, sin. And once Onassis say, hey, listen, I've done you wrong. I come to you by the mercy and grace of my new Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, he looked up his eyes and what was that? Jesus Christ. My mediator. My sin offering to God. And now, Onassis and finally has a common ground. They are children of God. Now they need to show each other blood. They need to show each other love. Not blood. Love. They got to love one another now. He's now your brother. A brother in the same Lord that forgave you for all your sins, Philemon. If God forgave your sins, well, can't you forgive? Onassimus. You got to forgive now, Onassimus, whatever you've done wrong. 
You gotta forgive him and ask whatever he's done wrong. Philemon, you can't keep that bitterness. You got to love and forget and put your problems with Onassman under the blood. I don't know what, what ill feelings that Philemon will have, but there will be. He has been violated by Onassman. And I sat under the church with a person one time and I had bitterness. And it would keep me awake. It would make me angry. It would just grow the root of bitterness. And once you get that root going, it's hard. But I got right with God. I wrote twice. I'm going to tell you before God and Jesus Christ, I had fault. But I don't think I've done anything wrong with that. And I wrote twice saying, listen, if I've done anything wrong, you declare to me, I will make it right. I apologize. And that person wrote me twice. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. But I'm like, well, you know. Then I'm not the one with the problem anymore. You're the one with not forgiving spirit. I am. And it no longer bothers me. You say, are there any other Christians out there that bother you, Stanley? As far as that bitterness, absolutely not. Now, from others I got threat I gotta pray and worry about but we're dealing with love here and it's not love to carry a grudge and I'm not talking about if this is between Philemon and Onassis I'm talking about what's between you or me we may have an Onassimus in our life that has done us wrong. And you or, or I have held that against him. And that is not love. That's hate. You know where the, the prodigal's father's son came and forgave him, wrapped his arms around, gave him a, a, a robe or a coat, gave him the fatted cat, gave him a party, he's home, he, he's He's glorified by God. The brother sat outside the party, never went into that party, never rejoiced. Oh, my father never killed for me, the fatty cap. Everybody, my friend, look at that saying. He went out with the whores and he did this, spent his money. And that guy, bitterness. And that ought not to be so. I've had it. I thank God it did not root as deep as some of you are suffering today. There are Christians that say, I will never forgive that person. And yet, Jesus Christ forgave you of all your sins, didn't he? Every single one of them? Why can't you forgive the sins of a brother or sister in Christ? And that's what Paul's saying. For the love's sake, brethren, finally, I'm getting their names mixed up. Onassis is coming to you. Not only is he coming to you as a runaway slave who has done you wrong, he is coming as a child of God. I wonder if Paul would have had a copy of the prodigal son that Luke wrote. <laughs> Paul, you give him this gospel track I just wrote? Okay. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be interesting if if Luke hadn't written that? I'm not saying he did, okay? But wouldn't it have been interesting that would have been penned by Luke by now? And he said, hey, Paul, send this off with Onassis. Wouldn't that be interesting? What? It'd be interesting. I like that. I'm not saying it did. Please don't say Stiley said that the prodigal son was a gospel track. Of, don't. No, I'm saying it would have been nice. Okay, where was I? So if God's forgiven you, finally, um, you ought to forgive on that. If God has forgiven that Christian saint. You ought to forgive that brother or sister in the Lord. Paul is giving his life's account here. And he's not the boast like the book of Corinthians where they were boasting. Well, oh, let me be foolish. Let me show you how better I am than you guys, carnal babes. There's a time to boast for a learning, for teaching. Look where Christ has brought him. 
Paul's life was of hardship. You ever read about his perils? I forget which book that's in. The perils of countrymen, the perils of, of shipwrecks, of being hungry, being thirsty, being in fasting, being of robbers, being... Oh! And we complain about our lives. From the saved and from the lost, he had problems. From the Jews and the Gentiles. And you know what? The entire population that Paul knew gave him a hard time. He's in jail. Are you in jail? Maybe you are. Maybe you're in jail for the word's sake, but most of the people I'm talking to right now, you're not in jail. He's aged. And we will see the maturity that Paul has by now. Paul will show, hey, get things right. Love of God. Read them. Be peace with them. But he has peace and joy. And what he's telling Philemon is living and doing right by God's way. God's way, hey, listen, for love's sake, not of pressure making you have to. But for love, receive him back. Because I want you to receive him back as a child of God and also as your your slave. You have a property called Onassimus. He's now a child of God set free. And Paul wants Onassimus and Paul has to get the permission from Philemon because Philemon owns Onassimus. So what Paul is not only saying, listen, he's a brother of Christ forgiven of his sins, but he's also under your bondage. And I need him. And he needs to get right with you the deeds that he, no, let's say sin. The sin that he has done against you, Philemon. He has come to you to repent of those sins as he's done with God. 1 John 1, 9. He wants to get right. You, like God, forgive him. May I ask you another question? We'll get to this later, but can I have him back? Paul said. It is wonderful no matter where you are or what is happening if you do it God's way. <clears throat> At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and the prisoners heard them when they sung to God. The same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, two of them. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. Christians are in the will of God, even in prison. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit, not fruits. Fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And many Christians do not have that peace and love and joy because they are sinning. Finally, if you do not get right with Onassis, as Onassis wants to get right with you, you will get the root of bitterness. You will not have the love, joy, and the fruit of the Spirit. For love's sake, remember what God has done for you, and remember what you should do to Onassis. Christian, remember God has forgiven you all your sins. Are you not able to forgive the sins of a Christian? Peter says, Lord, how many times should I forgive the person who does me wrong? Seven times? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm done. And Jesus says, no. What was it, 70 times? Seven or 70 times 70? I don't know. I'm wrong. No. Don't even count it. If that man has sinned you 24 hours that day and 24 hours he has asked you to forgive him, you forgive him. Help him. Maybe he's got a problem. Maybe he needs to be taught. Next lesson coming up. What will we do today? Call a lawyer? 1-800, we'll get them for you. I, I got a Christian done me wrong. Mr. Lawyer, please help me to get him. I've been offended. Get a lawyer. 
That violates the teaching of 1 Corinthians. Paul, while in prison, is concerned with one man, a fellow brother, Onesimus, wanting to do right. Fearing what another Christian may say or react, Philemon, Paul loves Christians, the very people he wanted to kill and imprison. Paul in his epistle has shown us how much growth he has in the Lord. He has gone from killing and torturing Christians to loving and helping them. And he is writing. He has written letters to churches, epistles. He has written to ministers, Timothy. He is writing this one chapter, this one letter, epistle for one man in Christ. Please receive him back. Please receive him with love. No matter what he has done to offend you. You know when Demas left 2 Timothy 4, he would, you know it hurted Paul. You know when Paul got the news that Timothy's having stomach problems. It hurt him. Paul is always praying and in tears for the church. We ought to have that love. Instead of having bitterness, instead of, oh, what you did to me, oh, what they did to you, blah, 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 you ought to be uh, praying for them. These two Christians are having a problem, and the only thing I can do to reach out to them is keep my nose out of their business, but keep my prayer life for them too. Lord God, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. There's something against those two Christians. I'm going to lift it in prayer till they get it right. How's that? Why don't we gotta stick our noses into it? Why don't we stick our prayer into it? You got a problem with a fellow Christian? Why don't you pray about it? Spend more time in prayer than open up this big fat thing underneath your nose. It'd be better. If Paul witnessed and led Onassis to the Lord, and we don't know. Unlike many Christians in church, he does not leave his convert to wander about. He, knowing Paul, has been taught the foundation. And when Onassis was ready to return, then and only then would Paul would send. How many newly saved people are out there, out of church, out of fellowship, because no one has taken the time on that newborn babe? Paul says, I have fed you with milk, because you're not able to bear the meat. That's a doctrine of the Bible, that we go out and get everybody saved. we got 100 notches on our belt about people getting saved. Glory to God, people are getting saved. What are you doing with them? What? I'm supposed to do something with them? Aren't you happy that I got 100 people saved this week? How many of you taken under your wings and grown them and fed them and, and taken care of them as a baby? As Paul said to Timothy, you are my spiritual son. Oh, I don't do I don't do that. I just get them saved and go after the next one. And where are they? Where are those ones that are saved? To, I, I, don't, I, don't, well, I don't know. Am I supposed to care? Paul is sending Onassis with care, with tenderness, and prayer to go do right. One thing for Onassis. Onassis, you have gone to God and confessed your sins. Yes, I have. You are a child of God. Yes, I am. What you told me, Paul. Now you go to the person that you offended. Yeah, you've been to God. Now you go to the person you offended and you get it right with him. Is that what a Christian is supposed to do? Yes. All right, go do it. <coughs> I don't know how long after I got saved. When I got saved, Saturday afternoon. Many of you probably heard this. I got saved a Saturday, Saturday afternoon in my grandma's living room in Waterford, Connecticut. I went back the next day to church. <laughs> I went back to church the next day. There are people who got saved and they never show up in church again. But I went back to church the next day, heard the message, and the pastor said something. I don't remember. I said, someone t yesterday received Christ or something like that. And Sally Lee come up or Sally Lee started to raise his hand, something like that, and testify before the church, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And when service was over, I went to my dad in New London and told my dad, the best way I knew how, you're going to hell and you need to believe Jesus. My dad thought, I told him to go to hell, and he had a little rebuke of his son, but I said, no, 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 dad, you're going to hell. 
I've been praying and witness to him ever since 1987. But, and I don't know how long after that, and I, I, I forget, I sat down and wrote him a letter. I said, Dad, I'm a Christian now. I'm supposed to make things right. I have stolen money from you. And you know it. You and I both know I stole money from you. I am sorry that I have done that to you. And if you will name a figure and allow me to make payments, I will pay you back what I stole you. I will not question the amount. I sent that letter off, and, I, and to make the story short, the letter came back, and my dad talked to me, he says, uh, you don't owe me anything. I wish my dad would do that forgiveness of Jesus Christ for his soul. You got to get things right. And you can't just get people saved and, and on their notch in your spiritual belt. You've got to grow them. Five people in your life that you witnessed to got saved and you've grown them in the word and how to do and be a Christian that they become a young man. Aged, Paul says. And doing right because you not only witnessed to them, not only did you water them for salvation of the increase of God, but you grew them from spiritual babes into young men, if not aged, that they can do what God expects them to do. Better five men in your lifetime doing that than, oh, I got 5,000 men that are saved and they're wherever and want to be and blah. And you run the risk of the danger that maybe many of them, just say this prayer and you can be saved. Yeah, you can get them saved. What do you do with them afterwards? Paul has raised old Nasmith. Now I want you to go back to the one that you've done wrong. That's hard. And I want you to get things right. See, there are some people out there, well, I got it right with God. Well, what about the person you offended? I didn't hear that. you got to go to the person that you've done wrong. No. There may be some of you out there, if you go back to the person that you offended, you may have to go to jail. You may owe a lot of money. God may not have forgiven you as, uh, forgive what, my, what I've done to my dad. You may have to owe up the responsibility of children. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that ye shall also reap. You know, I found out the places I worked that knew I was a Christian, and they knew I was a genuine Christian. And when I've done something on the job that was my fault, that beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's my fault. And at the end of the day, when it was the first available time I can, I opened and knocked on the, on the boss's door, went in, closed the door, and said, Boss, can I sit down for a minute? Yep. I broke this. I did this wrong. I said this, whatever it was. And I had a great deal of them. Going back to the publishing company I worked for. And my boss had great character for me because... Boss, I sinned. I've done wrong. And I have found that when you've been like that, instead of hiding, your boss will step up to the plate and say, okay, well, let's see what we can do to remedy this. Now, let me, t let me tell you another story about that. I drove a van for eight, nine years, I forget. And the mechanics for my van said that the way the brakes were I would slam the brakes down to come to my next stop. I had to stop almost every block. I had newspapers I had to deliver. And what they were saying was I was slamming the brakes down when I came to my stop, getting back up, slamming the brakes down. And my boss told, called me off. He says, I'm not going to ask you. I'm telling you what was said. I know you didn't do that because you would have told me. And come to find out, there was somebody who had they'd given my van while I was off. 
I had a vacation, whatever it was. And he was doing that. And when you set forth to make things right in your life, not only by God, but by the people you offended, it's better. It's so much better when, when you can get that peace of God because you've done right. Onesimus, you've got to go back to finally him in love. You confess to God your sins. Now, you gotta go get it right with Onassis. I mean, Philemon. So we gotta get out bitterness. We've got to face up to our sins before God and before man. That's a hard subject. And your sins may be to another Christian. If all, he come up to me and he offended me seven times, how often do I get to... And if you have done right, you have confessed your sin. And they don't want to forgive you. They do not want to give you any respect or any leniency. You've done your part. And if you've got to face a judge and say, Your Honor, I was involved in this crime. I am a born-again Christian now. And I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that Judge slams the gravel down and says, that may be perfectly fine with you. I don't care about that. You're going to serve your time. You're going to jail for that crime. Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also eat. But I'm saved by the blood. You know the illustration I used to use in prison a lot when it comes to sin and sowing and raping? Before you got saved, Chop your arm off. Chop it off. And then once you got saved, say, God, I'm a sinner. Lord God, forgive me. I, I want a piece of, I don't want to go to hell. Please, Lord God. And then you open up your eyes. You're saved, child of God. And you look over there. Okay, Lord, when do I get my arm back? Not going to happen, is it? Philemon does not know what the intentions are on that when he comes. And Onassis does not know what Philemon's going to do. And we all run into those things in life. What is going to happen? That's the biggest fear, the unknown. Let us go in love. Let us go in prayer. Let us go forgiving one another. And let's take responsibility for our sins. Adam and Eve, she made me do it. Well, the serpent made me do it. Oh, now to be so.